I've learned my lesson. I am never going to mouth off Mother Nature because she can win. Kevin, David, get y'all some of this. It's not easy to farm it. That's why you got to have that. So welcome to season three, Corn Warriors. What am I squinting for? Sunlight. We're getting a lot of sunlight. Now, if you can't be the best at it, don't do it. June 8th, it's kind of push come to shove. We're basically planting through some of the wet stuff, around a few things. I want everything to be perfect, and especially this year, it's not gonna happen. Ain't that something? That's just two days. I said, well, my goal is to be a personal best. But our personal best is a world record. I like to have the ability to make it rain. Carl's Neck Farm, and we are harvesting corn for the 2019 season. I am here to keep David Hula humble. <laughs> no, it's awesome. He's a great guy. Yes, I brought David's grandchild, Raylan Scott, Acres. We know the story of how Wheat Barley got their nickname. So, when Wheat and Robbie had Raylan here, you know, I'm hard of hearing. So I heard them say Ray Land, but it's actually Ray Land, W R A Y L A N. So I'm like, Land. Well, we're just going to nickname him Acres. So I got Acres here in my lap right now, a year and a half old, and teaching him the the excitement of harvesting corn. And he's supporting the true colors, John Deere Green. Corn. Corn. What are you doing, boy? You gonna drive? Alright. Got to turn to the right. Now we gotta to turn to the left really sharp. Yep. Okay, now we gotta turn back to the right. Hit a I do the book work, I do the yard work, all the cutting the grass, but I don't actually get out and operate equipment. I may help them move, but I don't, I don't actually operate on the farm. That's why I had a son, so he can do that. The year's been good. It's been sunny, hot, dry, so that's good for irrigated corn, not so much dry land corn. So it's the driest September we've probably ever had in a long time. I don't know if we have any world record stuff, but there is good corn. Here on September 23rd, 2019, we're kind of getting close to wrapping up corn harvest. I think we're down to around 500 acres left to go. One of the things we got going on here is we got four different seed treatment packages just to do some comparisons. Make sure we're doing all that we can. I got a puppy, that's Colt, Colt 45. Since Bud Light doesn't support corn anymore, reminds me of college. Just walking around campus with a puppy. So I was in a slump, so I had to get another puppy. I think Craig has stepped up to the plate a little bit, matured quite a bit. I think I minored in field and crop technology majored in drinking and blondes. Now I gave up drinking and girls, uh, you know, when I was about 21, now it's strictly work. So I, I can provide for my wife that I find. Don't give me viewers the wrong idea about me. It, you're not gonna be able to play half this on the TV. The cucumber deal was great. Uh, I think that that's probably what made Craig grow up because he had, it was his own crop, he was responsible for it, and so he's done well. Started growing cucumbers, 
That sucked. It's too much work. Oh my god. A lot of cucumber pickers only pick three rows at a time, and you've got a 12-hour window to really pick them when they're ripe, or they'll get too big because they grow so fast. I wish we had that problem with corn. Craigula yields 545 bushels per acre. Earning him a grade of 93% for the year. When I started this year, you know, the way the year was, a lot of guys were planting in April. And I was the guy saying, you, you know, you're, you're making a mistake, don't do it. And I would say at this point, I feel pretty justified in doing that. Now, am I saying every year we want to wait until June? Of course not. But I think we're making progress, and I've already got one change in mind for next year that I think is probably going to be the next step. I think we took a good step this year. I think we're going to take a big one next year if I can get a couple things done. So we'll see. I hate to call my shot, but I think we're in good shape. I think we're in better shape this year than last. And if we can get the couple changes I want to get made made and we can get planted timely, I think we'll be in real good shape. I've had a lot of variability, probably more variability this year than I've ever had. I mean, I've had places where I've seen the best corn I've ever seen, period. And you go 100 yards down the row and it's 180 bushel corn. I think we're getting to the point where we're maxing out our best just normal dirt and we're going to have to start picking one or two places to use consistently. Uh, we're going to have to, to raise our potassium levels fairly substantially, at least on the tissue test because we're not getting that done right now. Potassium is probably our biggest limiting factor if I had to pick one. We're looking into irrigation right now. We need to get some more drainage work done. Um, this field in particular needs some drainage work. Uh, the only thing that saved it this year is just it was planted later and had some more time to dry out, whereas our normal fields, you know, we probably pushed the, pushed the envelope a little too much on those getting them planted. But it was June 5th or 4th when we started, so, I mean, it just is what it is. But it's getting better. We'll just have to see if, it, see if it's enough, I guess. Ain't that right, Kicks? What do you think? What do you think about the year? What's that mean? Good, you guess? Yeah, he needs a Mountain Dew, probably. I bet he's got one over there in the Ranger. <laughs> yeah, he's already had one. <laughs> I'm ready for it to be done. I really am. I'm ready to move on and start working on 2020 and get her figured out. Precision is the plan for 2020, for sure. I kind of forgot about the 2020 monitor. That would go good. With 2020 and the 2020 monitor, it might put us to the next level. <laughs> can't thank the team enough, you know. I mean, we got a lot of people involved just to do these trials. I mean, the judges have been here all day. Just our whole team out here at Cardinal Farms um, been working our butts off, getting these trucks weighed. Can't thank everybody enough, you know. It, and it takes a team, you know. So, very blessed with what we got, for sure. Don't know where everybody's at now, but. Oh, there's pizza, huh? I think I really need to be proud of what we do have with the challenges we were faced this year. You know, I do believe we are very fortunate. I, I think we're in good shape. We fought the crop all the way through from day one till harvest. The biggest thing since we've started this is the plant health. I feel like that's the most important. Make sure that plant's healthy all the way to the end. Don't give up. It all kind of started with all that early water stress. Um, we lost a lot of nutrients with all the waters. We've seen that in our tissue tests and, and we ended up fighting areas that we've not fought in the last couple years. You know, we still learned a lot. We tried a bunch of different products, tried to wide drop it out, and we actually, I feel like we brought some crops back 
from some of the water stress with our Y drops. And I think you can see, I mean, we got a lot of health here at 24, 25% moisture out here. That's what we like to see. And I feel like that's where we get a lot of yield is at the end. For 2019, I'd call that a pretty good year. Brooks Cardinal, our audience warrior, harvested 319 bushels per acre this year. Earning him a Corn Warrior score of 81%. We were this close to 400 bushel corn. You know what pisses me off on this? We, mm, I don't even want to talk about it now. I'm just so pissed. I stopped shelling because I didn't think, I didn't think when we dropped over that damn little knoll that the corn was getting better, but it was getting better. And I stopped and I had about 150 feet further than what we had to go. And I thought, well, I don't want to push the luck. If I'd have went another, you know, 70 feet, we probably would have hammered 400. Now, is that not a kick in the balls? God! I think they, maybe they made a mistake. Oh. See, it was your load, <laughs> it was your load. Oh, believe me, the corners were clean. <laughs> <laughs> so they're rechecking it just to make sure. The thing, the thing I will say you when... You know what everyone says, six inches. Oh. <laughs> No, I don't. I don't know what anybody says. <laughs> but, I mean, the only thing I will say on that run is when we shelled through it, we knew it was bad corn, and that's why we, on the second one, we said we was going to stop. Yeah, exactly. We knew because it, it dropped down. You, you better refigure that. We did twice. We did twice. Son of a <laughs> So I guess it is official. I don't know what to say now. <laughs> but I did take pictures of um, some of the corn here. This is why people, I'm telling you, don't get wrapped up with counting kernels. This is the corn that we shell, the size of kernels that we shell. You know, that's a dime there. So basically it is almost the size of a dime. And, um, you know, that is part of management, the banding, keeping the plant healthy. Luck, a little bit of luck involved. I, I don't know, I'm just flustered right now. I mean, I missed 400 by six bushel, less than six bushel, so I'm pretty pissed off right now. I don't know what to say. I will say for this year, it this was the toughest year to grow corn we've ever had. I mean, as far as, especially high managed corn. I mean, we went from a super saturated first up till June, you know, record flooding and rainfall till like now that we're in a, we just broke a September all time record for all time high temperature for the month of September. And then you throw on, we've had like three tenths of an inch of rain in like 40, 45 days. You know, we've, we've been after 400 bushel for you know, we made it a goal back in 2013, you know, when we broke, you know, we jumped to 374. And, you know, we, we keep inching. It's just getting there as a son of a <laughs> You know, which I guess we're making headways. You know, last year we were a bushel better than what we were the year before. And, and this year we're, we're six bushel better than what we were. So, you know, I'm glad that you guys got to be here when we, we hit our number. Oh, I got a drink to that. Miller Lite for, for that yield. <laughs>
Kevin Call breaks his own previous record with 394 bushels per acre. And a Corn Warrior score of 88%. Well, we're coming to the end of the 2019 season, as least as far as corn warriors goes. We got a long ways to go before our crops out. Yep. Stuck. Need to get the trucks a little farther up the hill. Going. We're going to need to get the trucks a little more downhill there. Yeah. Ooh, full. That's the full noise. You'll be lucky if that uh, takes off there. Actually, I'm going to make a wager right now. He won't be able to take off. He'll be hooking back on. And I'm going to say he's not going to move when he gets back in. I'll move the Kenworth farther forward. Oh You're good, Austin. Go ahead and get out of the way. Let's load the next one lighter. I don't know how much I had on that. It was too much. I'm going to go down along the lane now, Austin. Just wanted to thank everybody for their help this year. Agrigold, uh, I'd like to thank them. Ag Focus supplied us with some products this year. They worked out well. Put uh, some stuff in my planter, row cleaners, I like those. Brant brought us some products we tried out this year and used. Hefty, we have some of their products. I'd like to thank them. We'd like to thank Precision Planning, did uh, quite a few things this year. We got a Gen 3 2020. Uh, this year it's got some new features. I'm really glad to have the Delta Force and the Speed Tube with our planting window knocked down to basically ours. So I'd like to thank them for that and getting that on. But I would like to thank everybody's help. This my, uh, I should say my crew this year. Melissa, my fiance, she helps with a lot of the decisions on fertility and seed and things like that. Helps me do a lot of planning. And David and Kim, David and my son, Kim, my new daughter-in-law, they got married in March. David's here every day and Kim, Kim helps out some part-time in the green cart. Helps David with the cattle, which is a big help. Mike Propster, which he, uh, he's kind of our fix-it guy. We, uh, seems like we break a lot of stuff and we rely on Mike to fix it. We're all going to hope that 2020 is better than 2019. I think I'm like a lot of guys who want to get 2019 behind us and uh, just start fresh next year. Thanks for watching. Dan Lipkiss harvested 289 bushels per acre this year. earning him a Corn Warrior score of 80%. Combining corn in North Florida. 100% beet sand. Problem right now is I got a 680 in the field and an 8250 the eight trucks can't keep up. It's 
so we're eating some corn pretty fast. We're in cotton country, peanut country, so we're not used to having uh, a lot of combines in the area. So I hope that we do uh, find something we like here and they can service it, give us parts, etc. Kind of last minute, Case came to the table, wanted us to demo a head or a combine, and they didn't have a head for 15 inch corn and they, they wanted us to come at the last minute and do a head to head kind of comparison between it and deer performance wise see how I liked it they're trying to sell it obviously and I let them run it for two or three hours out here first and get all the bugs worked out of it before I got on it just to make sure brand new machine you know um, seems to be doing well so we'll see Georgia, they always predict rain. You kidding? We got a 60% chance almost every day. But we're harvesting a variety plot up there. We got Agri Golden Pioneer. They're here checking the plots. We've got some Donagro in the plot. We've got some Decab in the plot. We've got some Hefty, uh, Hefty corn. It's like 35 different varieties. So there's good representation of a lot of different companies, brands. This helps us to know next year what hybrids we need to use on our farm. So they're an integral part of what we do. They take time to plant, they take time to harvest, but that data is invaluable to know what hybrids will do on your farm, the way you grow corn, under your management. So we, we take the time, we do it. It's going to be interesting to see how well everything does. We also use it as a way to set the combines, get them calibrated. This case combine has not been calibrated yet on yield. It's coming. We just hadn't took the time. We had the six trucks standing there at once. We need to get them out. I hate it when the trucks and drivers are sitting there staring at you like, when are you going to fill me up? Uh, we hadn't got any contest corn yet. We came here, planted first, to get everything set on the planter. Once we had everything set, then we moved to some of our better ground. Of course, it was wet early too. We couldn't we couldn't stand up on some of the wet ground early. We planted it 10 days, two weeks later than what this was planted. So as soon as we get through here, we'll be heading to some better ground, and we'll see which one wins. We got several different varieties and different populations, and some pretty good yield history on some of the ground. So we'll see how well it does. Everything got the same exact treatment. This is production corn. We understand that you know, the sugar sand just don't have a lot of holding capacity and we keep our yields, uh, yield expectations reasonable. I mean, we're not going to come out here and push for 500 bushel corn, it's just not going to happen. I say it won't happen. It's the first time I ever planted on this sandy soil. So I'm taking a very cautious approach. I mean, I've seen a lot of 300 bushel corn out here. hybrid we're in now sucks pretty much. It, it won't be back, I can tell you. Um, you know, it's just, it's not there. Um, not even for production corn, there's better options, so this one won't be back. When I have another hybrid standing right next to it that's making 330 with the same management, I made a mistake by choosing that hybrid. Of course, I ain't taking a full header with. That's why I said this variety from here over sucks. It won't be back. History repeats itself. We'll make 45 or 50 bushels as a double crop on a bean, so that's not bad. It gives us another chance for a bite at the apple. Uh, I'm always in somebody's, you know, shadow, so that's okay. One day I'll I'll make it to the big boy leagues. Randy Dowdy pulls an amazing 552 bushels per acre. A huge yield for any year. And he walks away with a score of 92%. 2019, we were kind of different than the rest of the country. 
and that in the springtime, once we got started in the middle of April, we had the right amount of moisture, the right amount of heat. You know, we plant based on a GDU forecast in five days. And, you know, we were hitting that just one week after another. Corn coming up in six days, seven days from the day to plant. And that doesn't usually happen for us in April. Usually that's something that happens in the middle of May. Well, we had that the whole season long. Now we did stop planting for a little while because it did turn off a little cool or we got wet too. And then when it dried up, we just got the heat right back and hammered it out. The rest of the country that was too wet, well, we were, we were dry during that same time frame. When you got irrigated corn, dry weather's not a bad thing because as you well know, when it rains, you got cloudy conditions. Well, when it's dry, you got a lot of sunlight. I'm like everybody else. If I could pour sunlight out of a jug into the inductor in the sprayer, that would just put a grin on my face because I know it would turn into bushels. Hello? Sir, where are you on the freaking car? I mean, I thought y'all would uncover the truck. Well, I mean, we were in a hurry, deputy dude. Why would you be in a hurry? That's why I needed a truck to dump into. Oh, you're pissing me off. You're pissed. That doesn't even make sense. Well, where are you? Where are you going now? I'm right here. I'm waiting on a grain cart to dump into. Bye. Just a minute. Maybe I've made some made smart decisions. You start to learn and try new things and start pushing stuff. Try a few acres at first. And then if it works, try a few more acres the next year. Don't go changing your whole operation. You know, growers have become successful, and there's a reason they're successful. So you just got to try things slowly. If you try something new and it doesn't work, but you've been reading a lot of successful things about it, don't give up on it the first year because something might not have been right, either weather-wise, something new as a grower might not have done. So at least try something the second year. I think if David and Randy can get out there and help farmers achieve higher goals, then I think it's awesome. If people take the information they're provided and apply it, then they can achieve great goals as well. I ain't been to none of the meetings. Somebody's got to stay and work. I tried to get the family and friends a discount, but they said that didn't apply. And when we got into harvest, you know, we were seeing numbers that we felt were surprising to us because, hey, we had some dry weather. Now, part of that's because the genetics are getting better. And then the other part is, you know, we're doing a lot of things right. And then when we got into the irrigated stuff, man, that was probably some of the most excitement we've ever had here at Renwood. And let me tell you, we've had some excitement in the last several decades, but this was an exciting year. You know, I look forward to working with the next level group just to kind of share where we've come from and where we are today. And we as a group can kind of help all growers that participate just to push their yields to the next level. Because that's what pays the bills, y'all. And that's what gets exciting. You know, having these high yield spots, they're fun, but when your farm average continues to climb, even in a stressful year, man, you are doing things right. So 2019, I'd say would be a, a successful year. We've had some great learning moments this year. So looking forward to 2020 and the results for the rest of the Corn Warriors for 2019.
Greenwood off. I'm in charge of this operation now. Hold on tight. David Hula brings in a whopping 616 bushels per acre, earning him the title of Corn King this year with a score of 95%. Here I am at the airport getting ready to take off to go to uh, Nebraska to talk to some folks in the next level group. And all this is exciting because now, today, I get to finally share what that yield was because it is difficult to keep it a secret. So when you think, you know, Dave, man, good job. Man, you sit, sit the bar really high. We got over 600 bushels, which, you know, that's a goal. It's been a race to see who we get there first. And, you know, I realize it's not just me, it's a whole team effect. You know, I got the, those at the farm, my son, Barley, that helps me out. So we're using Soil Warrior, we're using Brant Fertilizer, we're using some PGRs from some folks, and you know, Pioneer Genetics, and then the John Deere Harvester and Planters, and Precision Plant Net attachments on the planter. Man, the list just goes on and on and on. And then, of course, the good Lord. You know, here, I'm starting to squint right now. The one thing that he gave us in 2019 was an abundant amount of sunshine. And, you know, that didn't lend itself well to our dry land corn. But, boy, for our irrigated corn, it helped us knock the ball out of the park. And so we're just grateful for having that team cooperative effort. And, you know, we harvested this corn in September. You know how hard it is not to share your yield for two-plus months? Oh, it was painful. You know, you don't have to shoot for these super high yields. You know, that's why, you know, next level being a huge part. You know, we're just trying to help set personal best from one year to the next. And, you know, when you're setting records, personal best become harder. So maybe that's one reason I ought to think about put, hanging up my shotgun. Well, except for duck season. I don't think Barley will let me leave my shotgun on the wall then. But then when we get to planting corn, maybe I'll just hang it back up and, you know, let somebody else try to give it a try. You know, I'm competitive. I'm sure I will continue to try. I don't know if that'll happen, but we'll just see what 2020 is like.